three different types of groups of people before you all come down. I want you to show, I want to show you the specificity of how God loves you, and I don't even know you. <laughs> I haven't broken into your email. I promise you, I didn't find your phone on the ground and break into your text messages. I didn't get an errant call. Nobody told me about it, but this is how much the Holy Ghost is here this morning. There's a group, maybe one or two, that are, and just stay seated until I call all three, that are in a situation where you're being manipulated in the relationship. A spirit of manipulation. And I'm going to tell you this, this is how I know it's you, and you know it's you. You didn't bring that person with you here today. That person borderline, basically, because it is a spirit of manipulation, has sent you here today. Ah, that's a good See, you had to come in and get the right answer. Okay, all right. And then the second group. All right, this is the second group. The second group is in a place where ministry does not have the effect that it used to have in your life. First place, group of people, one or two, maybe more, is the power of the Holy Ghost that are being manipulated and the person is not with you. The second group, ministry does not carry the weight or the value. Wow. It used to, it used to, it used to, it formerly did in your life. And the final one, the marriage that you know can be prosperous is the reason why the devil is causing it to be a disaster. You got manipulation. You've got the second group, which is in a place of getting ministry, but it's not like it used to be. You want to need you need to revive it. And then finally, the marriage is at not a breaking point. But it's at a point where you have identified that the devil is after you. Maybe at the altar right now, I want to pray with you. Come on down right now. Come on down right now. If you are in any of those categories, this is how much the Holy Ghost loves you. This is what the God that you serve wants to do for you. There's a manipulation of you doing what they want you to do. And they don't even make you do it. But it's the manipulation of you knowing that if you don't do it, look at God. If you don't do it, you don't know how long that relationship is going to last. Second group, ministry don't have the value of victory it used to have in your life. And you want to get it back. You want that fire, that zeal, that push. You want to uh, know God like you used to know. And then finally, that marriage is teeter-totter. No, you're in it for the long haul, but God says, I want it to be all that I called it to be from the very beginning. I want it to go back. Here it is. When the, the gleam was in the eyes, you were at the altar, and you said you did. I want to give you that back. You got a supernatural, excellent job. And do you know what that means? That means that the church level of maturity is growing up. Yes, when you can leave a mic and go host at another church's uh, house to get their mic, that means that the power of God is in this place, and he's using you to mature. Tell your neighbor, I'm all grown up now. I'm all grown up. Amen. You're not playing tricks. That's for kids. Uh, you are now in a place in a position where you can hold your own. And I just thank you all for allowing me to, to go out to Mount Gilead, uh, me and first lady. And we, <laughs> Brother Kevin is getting me already. And, and, and you know how he sounded like that. Me and this man had a wonderful time two weeks ago. It was, we had such a good time. It's almost like, oh, you're sinning. He's just laughing and having a good time, enjoying the Lord. What happened with me was that I was at a workshop that Mr. Kevin Keys invited me to from Monday to Wednesday, right? Monday to Wednesday. Oh, my God. Monday to Wednesday, we hung out. I uh, had a wonderful time at the mentoring center in Oakland, California. By the way, I might as well give you anything. If you can, and we'll sign up for this, and we'll get you straight on how this will work. Uh, if you can, we want to get it registered, not this week, but next week. We'll get it together. December 5th, 6th, and 7th, there's some training that's for free that's going to happen with some more people that are coming from Oakland. It's just the, the O and the Bay is all on us. Uh, some folks from Oakland are coming down, and they're going to do some training, not here in our church, but abroad. We'll have a time and a date and a place for you for being able to mentor people. Now, how I'm going to work this is, is that the mentoring that they gave us is very, if you want to say, uh, to the point, it's direct, and it is powerful. What we're going to do is just add some word to it and begin to use that on a daily basis at your job, in your community, in your home, and be able to attach those so that what I do on the mic, 
you can do in a moment's chance. Amen? We're going to apply those things to be able to be mentored here coming real soon. But yeah, it was an awesome, wonderful time. Great things happened. The word of the Lord fell. And I've got word for you now for two or three weeks just because of a little time I had by myself. How many of us know when you can't hear God, you need to get along with him? Oh, man. Turn off the cell phone. Amen. Turn the TV off. Oh, glory be to God. Uh, power down on that laptop. Amen. And get before God and understand that we better be hearing from the Lord. Amen. For many of us, you don't have the right not to vote. Amen. There's some people that died for it. There's some people that fought hard for it. There's some people that didn't get sleep over it. And there's some grandfathers and forefathers that believe by faith we will be able to walk into the land of the liberty, the home of the brave. And have all that God has called us to have. Make sure that you get out and vote uh, locally for your mayor, uh, for your council members, and as well for your president. Now, let's get to the word because it is 1101. Have a seat because I know in a minute you won't stand up. I already know where this is going today. Uh, real quickly, let's turn to Deuteronomy 30. In 19 through 20. Oh, I had a word this past week. I'm telling you what, sitting up there in the Bay Area, a lot of things happened for and to your pastor. I uh, was there Monday through Wednesday for one thing. Then Thursday, just had great fellowship with the gentlemen that were up there, Kevin Keyes and Mr. Nesbitt as well, and some other individuals, Sister Denise. And it was all type of faiths up there, denominational groups up there. Structure is going up. It's a beautiful place for your leader to go to to bring back information on what God is going to do for you. With that trip, uh, also at the end of it, I got to do what I love to do the best. Go into the Word, go into the house of the Lord. Uh, Brother Vance Barnes is the pastor there. If you're ever in the Bay Area, get by what is called Bayview, Hunter's Point. The man of God is doing some supernatural things uh, in that area. And we'll be down to the cross here, hopefully, before the year is over. Bless the name of the Lord. I'll tell you what, I got saved all over again while I was up there. Just all together, all over again. If you're running out of energy and you're down to your last and you don't know what to do, pray, but push your feet over to this spot called Everett and Jones. <laughs> I got a word's worth of word off of one bowl of greens. Anybody have some greens that you go find your mama just to slap them? You just, mama, just one time, put me on punishment, but let me just... <laughs> Yeah, some barbecue joint there in the Oakland area. Uh, really blessed me supernaturally. Uh, uh, great things are happening all over the place, and I want you to be a partaker of them. We got to get to this word. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says this, what? I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. Who is God talking to? Us. He's saying, I'm talking to you. I'm from Ohio. I'm calling heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death. Tell your neighbor, it's going to be one or the other. Everybody say that. Say it's going to be one or the other. Ask your neighbor which one you're going to choose. Wait for an answer. I ain't moving. Wait for an answer. No, we can't move this service. And you don't get it. What you going to choose, congregation? Because you're smart. Because you go to a good church and you got the best teacher in the world. Which one you going to choose? Choose what? Right, like preaching. I was about to put the down. Y'all was going to mess with me with that. Uh, choose life and death. It's before you, but choose life. Here it is. Blessing and cursing. You know what I found out about cursing? You know what I found out? It's not too fun. And, and it just hit me. Um, I was reading in the, in the middle of this message, blessing or cursing. You know what's bad about the curse? The curse does not kill you. You got to live with it. This is messed up. This is a, uh, this is heavy. Because right now I'm trying to I'm trying to tell you something. The the curse makes you want to give up and die, but you can't. So you got to live with it. 
I wonder how many people married a curse. No, okay, it is. Blessing and cursing. Blessing. Therefore, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that, that's just too right. That wasn't passed, but that's too right. Therefore, choose life. Oh, we didn't get the answer right just a minute ago, but he's telling us, hey, don't all wake up. Choose life that both you and your descendants may live. I don't want to go into how deep Hebrew goes into live because that means an abundant life. It doesn't mean you got a pulse and a heartbeat and your blood pressure is 120 over 80. It's not 40-40 vision. It's, it's that your life is more abundantly. Verse 20. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, that you may obey his voice, that you may obey his voice, that you may obey. You know what I found out? You can't obey nothing that you can't hear. Well, God. I'll tell you some stuff happened in Oakland. <laughs> There's some stuff happened in Fresco. I'm coming back with a whole nother thought process. Here it is. You can't do what now I'm not telling you what to do. I'm saying you can't hear God if you're always talking. Okay, all right, well, uh, his voice that you may uh, cling to him. Oh, that's good. I like that translation. You may get fixed on him, for he is your life and the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Let's see, I think it's one more verse. Verse 21. That's it? All right, let's go back. Spoke all these verses. Let's go back. Uh, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. Go back one more. Go back to 19. Okay, that's what I'm focused. There it is. I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and mercy. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Today's topic title for the message today is Let's Make. A deal. Very good job, graphic artist. I almost want to play Wayne Brady right now. <laughs> God's irrevocable covenant promise. You're going to find out today why you got to hold on this month to everything God gave you last month. <clears throat> if he didn't do nothing for you last month, get ready because it's about to be overflow from last month. But if he did something for you, get ready. You're going to have to protect it. Let's make a deal. God's covenant and his promises. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of the word. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're saying. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen again. Tell your neighbor, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. Look back at and ask them, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What the, what the numbers are like? What type of deal are you saying? What type of deal do you want to perform? I got to make sure it's the right deal. Before we go there, this is the Holy Ghost, um, can we work up, uh, Mr. Screen Man, uh, I believe it's Amos 8. Is that what we were this past Tuesday yes. night? Yes, it was. We were Amos 8. Let, let's take a look at Amos 8. I've got to do something. That was just Holy Ghost right there. Just for a shout out so we can really get and capture ourselves on where we need to go uh, before we push on. Oh, why do I need to do this? I think I need to set the tone for this month up top front and center that we're going to have to get another visual about what God is doing for us and that we may be able to just not receive what he's doing but hear what he's saying yes. November is not up yet but it will be blasted this week is the month of no negotiations yeah. and while it's on my mind I forgot to do one thing so I'm giving Mr. Simon time um for those individuals who had a birthday in the month of November, could you raise your hands up? Amen. We know Sister Shanita got that. God bless you all up the top. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Foreman. God bless you all. Amen. 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 I'm not backsliding on that, but what would you be? What sign are you if you're in the month of November? What's that? Scorpio. Scorpio. Y'all don't look like y'all would sting nobody. Y'all so cute, sweet. I mean, what's, what's, what do a Scorpio do? Okay, to, to take a look at Amos 8 and 11. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Amos 8, I believe it was 11. We, I, is that it? Oh, I got some good students on Tuesday night. Guess what I'm praying for in the next month? This month, I'm praying that I can bring Tuesday nights down here. Amen. 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 I'm, okay. And then I'm praying on that other note that I get more amens about some good news like that next time. I say, no problem, no problem, not right now. I, I know you may not make Tuesday night, but Tuesday night is going to be all for you because this is what we do uh, on learning the work. Ah, there it is. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread, nor thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Monty, that's some deep stuff. <laughs> oh, you know why? Because your belly's going to be full, your thirst is going to be quenched, but you're not going to be empty. And here it is. It's not because. You don't want to hear them, or you don't have ears. It's because your ears have now lended themselves to something else that's telling you a lie. <coughs> I didn't. I need to say it. But the Bible told me to let you know. I think we're in those days right now. I really do believe. That we are in that time. What messed us up? Siri, Google, the worldwide internet, the web source that we can get. And so we just get our answers from there now. But there's a voice that's talking to you that's going to outlast everything that you're going through right now. And if you don't hear it, won't be unto us. It's clear. Look at it. Right there. I'm going to send. Why is God going to send the famine? This is the day that the Lord shut up. He says, I'm going to talk. But I have to be quiet because nobody's listening. That's the worst thing that can happen is somebody keep talking to you and you don't listen. Have you ever talked to somebody real long and their attention span was real short? Amen. This is the one place this month that if we're going to do what God told us to do with no negotiation, we're going to have to hear the word of the Lord. Tell two people, listen up. God is talking to you. Listen up. Okay, let's go back to let's make a deal. That's a, I just want to hit you with that so you can get that this month because this is the month that God is going to give you specific instructions and you do not want to be caught not listening to it. Let's make a deal is a television game show which originated in 1963. It has since been produced in many countries all over the world. The program was created and produced by a Mr. Stefan Hollos and Monty Hall, the latter serving as a host for many years. The format of Let's Make a Deal, listen real closely here, is and involves selecting members of a studio audience. I almost really got into this character. I had to hold up and say, is it pastor or is it God? And it was pastor. I was about to bring some people down. You know? But here it is. I want you to stay steady because you need to get this. The selected members of the audio stu for the studio audience are referred to as what is called traders. Making deals with the host. In most cases, a trader will be offered something of value and given a choice of whether to keep it or exchange it for a different item. Right. So the game show goes like this. You come down and there's something that's given to you, but there's also something on the stage that is of a certain particular number of value that you can exchange for it. And the deal goes, as the host is there, it gives you a chance and opportunity to exchange what you have for what you don't have. It gives you a chance to see what you've got and to see if there's something that's better there. Okay. You see, last month, was your month of opportunity to listen, to hear, and to do and obey God's holy word. 
We're now in the month of November. And the blessing that God gave you last month as you came on down will be challenged this month by the Satan that's going to come in your head. Let's make a deal is the offer of the devil that's got his own show. And what he wants you to do is bring to him something that you've got to make a trade for something you don't have. What you got last month was from God and what he's got is not godly. So Satan makes it look like if you take a chance, there's a greater possibility of you choosing something that's going to be better than what you already got. Mm. <laughs> the devil is the deal maker. He's the one that cuts the side deal with you to see if you'll bow down to him and then begin to serve him instead of serving God. But I told you already that God has blessed you with something that you have. Beware of not taking care of the blessing that God has placed in your hand. Uh, no negotiation November is for me to let you know that the blessing that you have can be taken if you don't recognize it. Amen. No negotiation November is the month that the devil will approach you as a traitor, but you're going to have to let the devil know I'm a stone cold believer. And what I've got, I will not let go of until God completely blesses me. Yes. Devil, I know what you're coming to do. I know what you've done before. I know what you've taken out of my hand. I know what I've laid down to pick up. I know what I stepped out of. I know what I backslid from. But this is the month that I'm decreeing and declaring as a believer and as a member of the God Most High body of Christ that anything you come to me with, devil, it will not be worth the value of what God gave to me. Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Did you hear what I said? No negotiation November is that you already got the blessing that the devil wants to come after. How do we know it's the devil? Because the devil never comes after something that doesn't have value. He only comes after things, people, and experiences that he can try to torment because he wants what you got. And he can't do nothing about it because God gave you what you have. Woe to the people that don't realize that you are living in the best, blessed place of your life with headaches, with bills, with sickness, with things that's not going right and almost losing your mind. God said, you still got the best hand. You still got the upper hand. Why? You got me on your side. And if you got me there, you don't need nobody else. Tell five people, I'm blessed. And I ain't ashamed of it. I ain't ashamed of it. I'm blessed. God has blessed me. I do have the flow. I do have the opportunity. And the devil is coming after me to get it. Where would you find this? You would find this in Genesis 3. You would find this in Genesis 3 because they have the blessing and don't even know it. Genesis 3 and 1 says, Now the serpent, who was more cunning, <laughs> who was more slick than the other creations that God has made. He says, I have an ability to trick you. You know, the worst thing, worst thing about Christians, and this is nothing against anybody, but the worst thing about a Christian believer is they believe that they can't be tricked. <laughs> they can't be fooled. They can't be bamboozled. They are just geniuses now. Now, sometimes God makes us look that way. But you know you in your private time and your problems. 
And you know how smart you is and how much more intellect you really do need. Right. And what happens is, is that we believe because we shout good, we praise God, we give him glory, that all of a sudden the devil won't come. But here it is. He comes after you because you are God's prized possession. Right. Tell two people, I must be worth a lot because he keep knocking on my door. He keep pulling at my car. He keep bumping the security code. But here it is. I put the code in place and when he's coming in now all I know how to do is say hallelujah I say praise God I say God I give you glory I say I thank you Lord for taking me through the first 10 months of the year yeah it was tight in January yeah it was tough in February yeah I didn't know if I was going to march through March yeah April my anointing almost went out yeah June I had to jump for Jesus July it started creeping up August I was annoyed but here it is September October, November is my month to say, devil, if you should have killed me, if you could have took it, if you would have had me, it would have been a long time ago. I thought your neighbor and say, I was built to last. I was out. I was built to last because I should be going off. I should be hooked on drugs. I should become an alcoholic. I should have cut the tires. I should have went outside somebody's head. I should have cussed them smooth out. They deserved it. But God said, don't fall now. I'm about to enter you into the blessed place that eyes ain't seen, ears ain't heard. And here it is. If you know as you stand up, you're going to be the first one in your family to do it. You one that's called to bring holistic principles to your family. Don't nobody praise them like you. Don't nobody shout for them like you. Don't nobody give like you. You're the one that's called that to make what God said that's going to be right. Don't let the devil turn around and make it wrong. You may be seated. I'm almost there. We're almost there. I'm almost done with my introduction. It is. It is. It is. But it says, I'm still in the garden. I ain't forgot. Uh, he says, uh, the woman tells the serpent what God told her. <laughs> Look how Satan is so slick. Right before we're disobedient, something tells us to be obedient. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all playing dumb. Some of y'all about to get this word that's going to knock on your door right now. Come on now. Bring it on. You knew before you turned the key on in the car where your mind and that foot was going to hit together. And how your hands gonna turn. Notice how when you sinning, you smooth. <laughs> Say that. And, 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 and you going where you gotta go, or walking where you gotta walk, or busting where you gotta bust. And, and you knew before you went where you was gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, stop that, don't you? Brian said he knew he got the text message. He knew already. See, and, and, and we hear, but we don't listen. Amen. You got a problem right now that God spoke to you about. Come on now. But you didn't want to listen. And versus you telling the devil what to do, your flesh told you what to do. Say that. Wow. My fault. Tell your neighbor, I'm so glad he ain't talking about me. Let me let you say, I'm so glad he's not talking about me right now. Because everything that God tell me to do, every way he tell me to go, everything he tell me to say, how he tell me to act, I do it. I am a robot. And he charges me up every morning. And I go where I need to go and do what God needs to do. Hallelujah. Praise right. the Lord all day long. So, so you, you don't have this problem. But I know a few people, including if I don't watch it myself, that if I allow me to become me, y'all don't want to see me. 
That's right, I'm listening to talk. You, you really don't know what we've come out of until <laughs> you're reminded what God brought you through. And so what happens is it gets so good because you're living in the land of plush, you're living in the land of opulence, you're living in the land of more than enough, and here it is, the devil comes to you to tell you, and you tell the devil what God said. I'm decree and declare thing today, you just don't tell the devil what God said, you quote scripture and what God said. Satan, you coming to take my health, but here it is, the blood of Jesus is now over my life. By his stripes, I am healed. Yeah, you said I'm weak, but the Bible says let the weak say they are strong. Let the poor say they are rich. Yeah, I might be the tail now in Deuteronomy 28, but I'm going to be the head later. See, we got a plan that God says he has exceeded, and if we just want to get by, if we just want enough, if we just want to make it through, God says you can't do that. He says, I I want you to be able to rebuke the devourer that's trying to take what I blessed you with because once you get it over, you can't get it back. Has anybody gave something to somebody and can't get it back? I don't know who I'm talking to right there. That's something. Ah, before you start crying, before we start passing Kleenex, I know. Hold up right there. Uh, I got the hookup for you. Here it is. The enemy is coming to throw you off. The very fact that you got something means that the enemy won't what you got. Oh, uh, y'all believe me? Jesus. You and I was not that fine before we got married. <laughs> Some of y'all don't want to grip with that. That's okay. You could not get a date before you said I do. All of a sudden, the spirit of the finest man come down on you. Beyonce has hit you all over your face. And suddenly you become the apple of everybody's eye. Don't you find it very coincidental that when you get a lot of money, you owe people a lot of money? <laughs> Haven't you figured it out yet that after you get the certification, after you get the degree, that's when you can't find a job? Amen. After you get your gift and you're trying to find a room, there is no building to step into. After you have the baby, after you decorate the room, after you get the marriage, after you get the job, how did you find out that there's a void there and the enemy comes in to try to antagonize you and try to beat you up and try to take what you got? But that's a sign and a decree of declaration that I am blessed. Hey, when you look at my life and you start becoming jealous of it, that's when I know I'm on the right path. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? When you get mad because I'm in that new car and you still on the bus, that's when I know the fate of God is upon me. When I start having overflow and start having harvest and start having breakthrough and you start breaking down, it's just a sign that I'm on the right path. God, tell me to tell you this. I'm just going to release this here. Your faith has to become offensive to people. I said, I said, I don't know if it's the Oakland that just jumped on me back there with all that thug and stuff. I don't know if it's the God in me that's coming up, but I'm here to tell you, your faith should so offend people that they should say, well, who do you think you are? Your faith should say, I will be a millionaire. And the person should run away that won't get a loan from you. You have to say, I will be healed completely with the cord sticking in your I will have a family and you ain't never had a mama or daddy. Do you know what I'm saying? I will have a job and you got felony records on your report. You gotta say, God is gonna bless me any way I'll be satisfied. Tell four people it happens 
for me. I got it. trouble if I eat it. What does the devil say? Let me tell you how you know it's the enemy. Let me tell you, you know how Satan is using people. This is how I'm explaining it to you. The devil will say anything it needs to to get you to stop doing God. Go ahead now. Everything. Everything. Everything and anything. Yes, the snake yes, that's pay. in your life right now that you are putting up with. Here it is, women, and you know he a snake. <laughs> you know he's just living around in your ground. Come on now. You know he's just sitting in your mouth. <laughs> you know he got a fork tongue. But as soon as you grab that tail. And you make it back on your life. As soon as you grab that tail, you will begin to understand and know that God gave you authority over every creepy thing. The snake is telling you to do anything. The snake will tell you to try drugs. Then the snake will say, do the alcohol. Then the snake will say, you go out there to the club. Then the snake will say, go around and hang around them people. Then the snake will say, go spend money you don't have. Then the snake will tell you to go eat up everything on the value menu. It's just eat this, eat number one, number two, number three. Keep going till you find something to fill that void that's in your life. Do something to make me feel good. I ain't got time, James, to talk to people that want to feel good all the time. This is not a feel good life. This is a life of servitude unto the Lord. And sometimes it's going to get stressful. Sometimes it's going to get weary. Sometimes it's going to have you faint. But he said, if you hold on, you will mount up like waves of me. You will run and not be weary. You will walk. And not fight. The deal the devil is trying to sell you is the same deal God delivered you from. He just manipulates the process to get you to come back around to the same problem. I, I, I used to have a. Uh, I don't even want to have that problem with the spending money. I got that under. I got that under control. Oh, yeah. Now, everything around me wants to break down. <laughs> so I'm not at the mall messing my money up, but now I'm getting into the insurance man every other day. It's all types of stuff breaking down. What What does that tell me? That tells me that that's the area <laughs> that I'm about to get the greatest breakthrough. Right. 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 <laughs> Who does not have a job? Stand up. Watch this. Stand, stand up. <laughs> I'm standing up right now. No, I'm already up. Okay. This is what God told me to tell you. Write down. Well, come on, first lady. Oh, God. He pray for me. Oh, <laughs> Kevin Keys, he did. <laughs> Here it is. 
God showed me something as it relates to finances. And this is what he showed me. Not that the people sit down are not. I'm not saying that. You're very generous. And you're generous on the next level. But these individuals have had visitations from angels that showed you what to do with the money when you get it. Comma. And the first dime you was getting was going back in the house of God. And then the second one you said you wanted to do was give to somebody else. You put yourself self last. And that's where the fight is, Natalie, Derek. Brother man, the fight is that your giving is going to bring it back to you. Press back. Bring it together. The fight is to hang in there to when you get it that you don't become self saboteurs because you didn't have it for so long. The goal is to hear God and His Holy Word and do just what He said for you to do when He told you He was going to bless you. Tell three people, don't change your mind. Stick with God. Don't do that different. Stick with God. Do what He called you to do. Stick with God. Uh, okay. Come on, make it closer. It's Notice how the person that was disobedient to God.